The newest section on the PSAT is the writing section, and it's the one that students oftentimes think is the hardest. Let's take a look at exactly what you're going to see on the writing section. As I mentioned, there's one 30-minute section for the writing. Unlike the SAT, there's no essay on the PSAT, which is a great thing. Essays can take a lot of energy and a lot of work, but this is just multiple choice questions. Now, you're going to have three question types. The first type that you're going to have is something called an identifying errors question. Let's take a look at what one of these question types looks like. Here we have an example of an identifying errors question. As you can see, you're just going to have a sentence. Sometimes it's long, sometimes it's short, and you're going to have four things in the sentence underlined. These things are A, B, C, D. These are your answer choices. What you're also going to have is you're going to have something at the end that says no error, which is designated with E as an answer choice. What you're required to do in these sentences is to first determine if there is an error. If there is an error, you have to identify which of the answer choices is incorrect and then bubble that corresponding mistake on your answer sheet. It's actually pretty easy. These are some of the simplest questions to do on the, S on the PSAT and the SAT. So oftentimes you should really do these first. The other type of question that you're going to see is something called an improving sentence questions. These are a little bit long the, than the identifying errors questions. Let's take a look at what one of those looks like. The San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and then we have a whole section underlined and it says a museum which upon opening in 1935 opened being the first museum of the West Coast and then the rest of the sentence. What you're required to do for the PSAT and for the SAT is to look at each of these answer choices and to identify which one would work best. Now, something that's a little bit tricky that takes students a little bit to get is that the answer choice A is always the same as what's underlined in the sentence. So if there's no change or like the identifying error questions, no error, you're always going to pick A. Now, the answer choices are either going to be ones that say the meaning of the sentence better or ones that don't contain grammatical errors. So it's really important to know your grammar rules and then to also be comfortable enough them, with them in application that you can answer these types of questions. The third and the final question type in the writing section is something called improving paragraphs. Now these are oftentimes the longest one. You're only going to have a couple of them on the PSAT and the SAT, but they're still really important. Now let's take a look at what an improving paragraphs question would look like. On the PSAT, like the SAT, you're going to have a couple of these, and you're going to basically have one to two paragraphs that have numbers next to the sentences. Now, these numbers aren't random. Basically, the numbers help you identify which order the sentences occur in the improving paragraphs questions. So that way, it's easier to answer the questions on the left. So, for example, a question would look like, sentences one and two in the passage are best described as what? It really helps to have these numbers on the paragraph and to know what they mean so that you can answer the questions a lot more easily. So, in a nutshell, those are the three types of questions you're going to see on the PCT writing section. As you improve and as you practice, you're going to become much more familiar with them. And you'll probably find which one you're most comfortable with so that you can answer those first. Let's take a look at a couple of strategies that you can use on the writing section that are really going to help you out.